Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Castanier Estates Boundary Study Public Information Session. Tonight, members of Team BCPS provide the public with the opportunity to take a look at two scenarios that were identified and recommended from the committee. Tonight's session provides the opportunity to not only take a look at the scenarios up close, but also to be able to speak with members of the committee, committee in asking certain questions and receiving clarification with the hope that the outcome is a recommendation for one scenario to move forward to our Board of Ed. So tonight we're gonna to provide that opportunity, but before we do that, I do ask Ms. Melissa Appler, our Coordinator for Strategic Planning, to come and to share some information for you. I neglected in sharing. My name is Monique Whitley Phillip, Executive Director for Strategic Planning and the Office of Research. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Appler. Good evening. Uh, thank you all for coming out tonight uh, to this public information session for the Castanea Estates Boundary Study. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to begin with a short presentation to kind of give an overview of the process and where we are in the process. And then we're going to have an opportunity to uh, walk around the room and view the uh, two scenarios that are available. And you'll have an opportunity to speak to the committee members and ask them questions and provide feedback on the uh, proposed uh, scenarios for the boundary. So tonight's purpose is to uh, provide an overview of the study, uh, where we are currently in the study process and the timeline, uh, have an opportunity to review the options and the data and information went, that went behind that, uh, the option uh, development, and to complete an online survey. Uh, part of the feedback here tonight, uh, you're gonna talk to the committee members and give them your feedback, but also it's very important we have a computer set up in the back and you have the opportunity to also provide feedback on the online survey. Um, so just to begin, the boundary, a boundary line, um, as we define it, is the a line that defines the school attendance area. Uh, the boundary process is uh, determined by and guided by policy and rule 1280, which is a board of education policy and rule, and it's driven by a community committee made up of a teacher, um, a, a teacher or staff member, the principal from each school, and two community or parent representatives from each of the schools. Uh, that representation in the committee is also uh, determined in policy and rule 1280. Um, the, what we ask this committee to do is make an objective examination of the data to create and develop options for the public to review. And then they bring those options, like we are doing this evening, to the public for feedback and feed, um, give feedback in the survey. Then that committee will come back together and ultimately make one recommendation of an option to take to the Board of Education for approval. So a little bit more about the boundary committee. Uh, it's made up of this boundary study has 26 members. There are 20 voting members. The, prince, the six principals of the schools that are involved in this process are not voting members. Then we have six uh, teacher staff members, one from each school, uh, 12 parents, as I um, noted before, which are parents or community members, two from each school, and then two area educational advisories. So we have the Central Educational Advisory and the Northwest um, for these uh, that are participating schools. What we ask of these committee members is we ask them to suspend all their parochial interests when they're considering boundary options. We want them to do what's best for the whole entire community and all the students in this community. Um, we ask them to be available for all the meetings. Uh, these meetings have been held between October and November for this boundary process. We ask them to collaborate exclusively with each other. And we also um, ultimately ask them to make one recommendation to present to the board via the community superintendent. So here's the process calendar and where we are to date. In the green are the committee meetings. You'll see there were three committee meetings. However, at the first committee meeting held on October 10th, the boundary uh, committee decided that they had obtained all the information and data necessary that the second meeting um, was stricken and they decided to take both uh, scenarios to this public information session to get additional feedback from the community. Uh, the, uh, which brings us here tonight to the public information session. After they obtain the information tonight, your feedback and then the survey results, we will come back on this the last meeting where they'll get all of that information, um, some additional feedback, and then make a final decision and recommendation that will be taken to the Board of Education on February 5th. So that recommendation will go to them. Then the Board of Education will hold a public hearing 
where com uh, community members and the committee can also provide feedback and, um, at that meeting. That meeting, there is no limitation to the number of people who can speak. Anyone who attends that meeting can provide feedback. And that uh, board hearing is on February 20th, and there's also a snow date. This calendar is available online for you to review. And then a, a board decision will be made March 5th. So a little background on this community. So this was previously the Chestnut Ridge Golf Course, and this was converted into a residential development. So the way that this uh, development was divided when it was a um, previously before it was a residential development, the boundary lines of these schools went right through the um, middle of this development. So since it's been turned into a residential development, the need to align these boundaries um, has, is uh, the central focus of this. So it, the development is split across two elementary, two middle, and two high school boundaries. And the split occurred once the uh, court was extended and the parcels were subdivided. Uh, you can he see the multiple phases on this uh, diagram to the right of the development. So um, as I mentioned, the boundary study objective is to address the alignment of the tenants areas for the Cassidy and Estates development only. Uh, and it includes six schools, Fort Garrison and Mays Chapel Elementary Schools, Pikesville and Ridgely Middle Schools, and Delaney and Pikesville High School. This map, uh, the colors are a little hard to see on this. Um, so um, the red outline is a, the outline of the Cassini Estates development. And what you can see is there's actually kind of a yellow color where you see Mays Chapel Ridgely and Delaney High School. It kind of shows you where the current boundary split right through this development. And then on the other side, it's like a light green or looks like a light blue here. That is Fort Garrison, Pikesville Middle, and Pikesville High School. So you can see here the need to align these boundaries to have this whole entire development go um, since the feeder patterns are already aligned for the elementary, middle, and high school to either have the community into one um, feeder pattern or the other. Uh, as I mentioned before, the uh, boundary process is governed by rule, policy and rule 1280. Within 1280, there are a number of boundary study considerations that we ask the committee to review when considering options for this. Um, these are not in any hierarchical order. These are just things that we ask the Boundary Study Committee to look at. There's also ones in here that may not be uh, pertain to this boundary study. However, there are a few that we'd like to mention. Uh, maintaining the continuity of neighborhoods. Um, the impact on transportation um, is relevant for this boundary study. Um, and the efficient, efficient use of capacity in affected schools. Uh, some of the committee members brought up the last meeting of whether capital projects may be um, in the works on, uh, that might provide relief in the future or, or additional capacity in some of the schools. Um, that would go also go along with the um, boundary study consideration of long-term enrollment and capacity trends. Um, also, the feeder school boundaries and continuity of feeder patterns. So the Boundary Committee was asked to review the options uh, in relation to these different considerations. Um, the committee's progress to date, uh, they had their first meeting on October 10th where they reviewed two uh, boundary options. Uh, they brought both of those boundary options here to get your feedback this evening. Uh, they've reviewed data on school enrollment and capacity, yield, uh, yield for the development. And by this, what I mean is the yield study for Cassidy States, it determines um, the number of students that may be generated at the elementary, middle, and high school level for this development based on historic trends of developments of this type. Um, they've also looked at BCPS uh, transportation routes, where the current bus routes are uh, for the existing schools. Um, the committee um, engaged in that first meeting in a small group exercise to evaluate the options for the strengths and limitations and in relation to those uh, boundary study considerations that we just went over. Uh, enrollment and utilization. I just want to provide a little bit of background on some of the data. The committee members will be around uh, the maps tonight to answer any questions you have related to the data that they reviewed uh, when considering these options. But just a few things. Um, the development that's proposed for Cassini Estates includes 40 single family units. Uh, it currently has no residents or students in it. There are, um, I think, two um, housing units under development right now, but currently there are no students that would be impacted by this boundary study. Uh, the potential student yield, based on uh, historic information, is that it could generate nine elementary students, four middle school students, and seven high school students. 
So, and when you put this into utilization, and you can talk more about this with the committee members, it's a minimal impact on the utilization at these schools. Um, so uh, we're going to get into the gallery walk. And the gallery walk, you're going to have the, op uh, the opportunity to review options uh, A and B. Uh, option A takes the entire Castanea Estates development and puts it into the feeder pattern for Mays Chapel, uh, Ridgely Middle School, and Delaney High School. And then uh, option B takes the entire Castanea Estates development and puts it into the feeder pattern for Fort Garrison, Pikesville Middle, and Pikesville High School. Uh, the committee members and BCPS staff will be around the maps to answer any questions you may have. And they're also, um, it's very important, while this discussion is important, feedback to give to them, and they will share that at the next committee meeting. We also encourage you to take the online survey that's set up in the back, and you can also access that survey from home. A um, little bit more on that survey. So uh, the survey will run from October 29th to midnight on November 12th. It's accessed at, uh, the, on our boundary today. If you go to the homepage of BCPS, on the left-hand side, there's a What's Happening section. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a Castanea Estates boundary study. You click on that, and you can access the survey from there. Um, the survey is available in English and Spanish. There are instruction cards backed by the survey in both languages that you can take and share with your neighbors, um, your school, to encourage them to take the survey as well. Um, public feedback from this survey and from what we hear tonight, it's not what option gets the most votes. The, uh, the purpose of that is to provide the committee with your feedback and the information uh, your, from that so they can make the decision and ultimate recommendation to the board. Uh, the consider, we ask them to consider, like I have mentioned before, the boundary study objectives and Rule 1280 considerations. We ask you to also consider those, and we have copies of them backed by the survey for you to review when you're considering uh, the survey. Um, and the devices are in the back. So um, if you have further questions or comments, all of the information that was provided to the committee at the first meeting is provided online at that website I noted earlier from the main page. Um, all of the data analysis, uh, their full packets, background information is all provided on the website and accessible to the public. Any emails that we've received from the public are also available on the website. Um, you can participate on the online survey until November 12th. If you have comments that don't fit into the survey and additional feedback or information that you think is valuable either for the committee to have or data and information you would want to see, we ask you to email boundary study at BCPS and provide that information. And all of that will be shared online as well as with the committee members. So next steps, uh, on November 19th, we'll have our final committee meeting where the committee will review all of your feedback that they've received from the survey. And they will come up with the one, make one recommendation to send to the board. Uh, the Board of Education will receive that um, recommendation on February 5th, and a final decision will be made March 5th. Uh, the Board of Education public hearing will be February 20th, and all of those meetings will um, occur right here at Mays Chapel Elementary. Uh, we thank you for joining us this evening. If you have any questions, uh, the BCPS staff and our committee members will be around the maps to answer any questions you have. There are three stations set up um, around the room, and we look forward to your feedback. Thank you for coming.